Section 8 of The Sins of Hollywood by Ed Roberts. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Whiskey Fumes and Orange Blossoms. They met on the boardwalk at Venice, three motion picture extra girls, and three natty students of aeronautics. For a week, the three uniformed men had been drunk, gloriously pickled. They were on a three weeks leave, and this was to be their last day in Los Angeles. Well, if it ain't a flock of chickens, spoke up one of the staggering representatives of Uncle Sam. Where in hell you going? he asked the trio. The girls giggled. It was a very humorous situation indeed. Watching the sad sea waves, said pretty little Bobette, tossing her curls. Who wants to know? Let's all go together, six little pals, suggested O'Mara, one of the airmen, and a prominent figure in the life of Hollywood's wild set. Let's all go together and see the shad waves waving. Where you get that pal stuff? wondered one of the girls. Who said so? You all get funny with me and my pals and I'll spank you where it hurts, said one of the students. The girls giggled again. The party was getting good. Well, if you guys will buy us a drink, maybe we might consider your proposition, said one of the extras. You're on, said O'Mara. And so then, arm in arm, they went down the boardwalk and into a cafe noted for catering to the motion picture profession. It was mid-afternoon when they emerged each a bit worse for the visit, but all contentedly munching peanuts. Babette, though, was a bit overjoyous. She lifted her skirts a little too high for strict decorum, and she shimmied down the boardwalk. But Venice is used to that. Suddenly, Omar stopped dead in his tracks, for the moment half sobered. My! God, he said in a stage whisper, I just thought of something damn important. Ah, hell, there ain't nothing as important as going somewhere and getting another drink, said one of the extras. It's important me, just same, insisted O'Mara. What's so damn important? Babette wanted to know. This is my wedding day, said O'Mara. Then singing lustily, Call me early mother darling. I'm going, going to the queen of the May. You're just a plain damn drunk, and you ain't gonna be queen of May or Mabel or anybody, asserted Bobette. Hell, I ain't, insisted O'Mara. I'll bet anybody six bits I'm gonna be married today. That's all. Who's the dame? wondered Bobette. Damn if I know, said O'Mara, but it's sure as hell somebody. Say, what's the idea anyhow, queried one of the girls. What the hell you want to go spoil perfectly good party with a damn wedding for? Ain't spoiling no party. Make it fine party, said O'Mara. Damn it, let's all get married. <laughs> See if I care giggled Bobette. I wouldn't mind it so much, but it always makes my wife sore whenever I go out and get married, said one of the other students. Uh, me too, spoke the third. I gotta get me a wife today somehow, insisted O'Mara. Where in the hell am I going to get me a wife? God, if it's so damn important to you, I'll marry you, you damn drunk fool said Bobette. So go, said O'Mara. Let's go. So they went. 
So to the city hall they went, arm in arm, where they procured a marriage license, and from there a justice of the peace, who performed the ceremony. After which they had a fine wedding supper, consisting to a large extent of spiritous liquors. Then at nightfall, the three girls accompanied the students to the Southern Pacific Station, where the boys entrained for a point in Texas, where their training school was located. The bride and her two friends returned to their homes, none of them remembering the details of the party. But they all insisted that it was certainly a very enjoyable affair. It gave them a new thrill. Sobered, O'Mara explained to his friends the necessity for his marriage to a girl he had never seen before. He had applied for and had received so many leaves of absence that his commander grew tired of permitting him to go off on his periodical drunks. This time, O'Mara had to have a good excuse. Marriage was the only alibi he could think of. Indeed, it was the only excuse his commander would tolerate. So he said he was going to be married. He was given three weeks' leave. He had to bring the license back with him. He brought it. When the armistice was signed, O'Mara was one of the first to return to Hollywood. He had a reason. He wanted to see what his new wife really looked like. He wanted also to be certain whether or not he was married. He found that he was, securely. Then came the inevitable. It was but a few short months till Babette was in court, applying for a divorce. Her new husband beat her, cursed her, hated her, she said. To his friends and hers, she made vile charges against him. She obtained a divorce and alimony. O'Mara is one of the most brilliant young men in the motion picture industry. He has held several splendid positions at the biggest studios in Hollywood. He is popular at parties and very much in demand among a certain set. Babette is receiving regular money now, the first she ever received. Being an extra doesn't pay well, or regularly. Alimony is much easier. The court collects that. And this is only one of a dozen similar cases. Take Jim Brown, for instance. Jim met a charming young married woman at a movie party one night. Her husband, a young and coming director, was dancing quite frequently with his leading woman. And the young wife, piqued, flirted with Jim Brown. The liquor flowed freely, as it usually flows at movie parties. Jim Brown and the director's wife went out for a walk. The director found them there, spooning in the back of Brown's car. Brown whipped the young director. The young wife said she was afraid to go home. Brown said she should go with him. She did. But the young wife, possibly repenting, decided the following day to return to her home and beg her husband's forgiveness. Quietly she stole into the house, for it was night. Noiselessly she switched on the lights, and occupying her place in her bed was her husband's leading woman. The young wife returned to Jim Brown. They are still living together, and her husband is living with his leading woman. End of Section 8